I've been meaning to talk about this game for quite some time, as it is a game that I mention quite often in my videos. The Legend of Dragoon is my favorite video game. No, not my favorite PlayStation 1 game. No, not my favorite RPG. It's my favorite game in general, and I have a really high love affair with this game. It encompasses my childhood, and it crafted me into the RPG fan I am today. Whereas many people are able to say their first RPG was Ultima, or their first RPG was Final Fantasy VII, I can say that my first RPG was The Legend of Dragoon, and it really has shaped my entire perception of this genre. I hope that in this video I will give you more than enough information that you will want to check out this game as well. I highly recommend it. First and foremost, if you have enough money, by all means go on to Amazon and check it out. You can find a copy on there for relatively cheap. Certain ones aren't very cheap, but I recommend getting it. If you don't feel like going to Amazon, then you can certainly go onto your PS3 and check out PSN, as they have a copy of The Legend of Dragoon available for, I think, less than $10. You can download it today and be playing before this video is even done. And if you don't want to go that route, by all means, check the description of this video, and I should have several links down there with the emulation and a emulator to play The Legend of Dragoon on your PC. I want you to play this game. I want you to check it out. I want you to be enthralled by it like I was, because it's a game that's well worth your time, effort. It's well worth putting hours upon hours into, and it is a great RPG. The Legend of Dragoon is a PlayStation 1 RPG that was released in North America on June 11, 2000. It spans four discs and can encompass over 60 hours of gameplay. It is one of the lesser known gems of the Sony library, and it's well worth your time. I highly recommend it. I think you should check it out, and in this video I'm going to tell you why. The story of Legend of Dragoon is told from the perspective of Dart Feld. He is a young mercenary from the land of Serdio, a land which has been at war for quite some time as King Albert of Basel battles with Emperor Dole of Kansas. These two kingdoms are fighting, but it's not quite clear why in the beginning. Dart is reminiscing at the beginning of the game about the situation at hand when he is attacked by a dragon, a species long thought since extinct. Dart tries to flee as best he can, but he's not actually able to escape the dragon until a mysterious woman in black saves him. This woman informs him that the town ahead was attacked the night before by the soldiers of Kansas, and Dart runs off because it's his hometown of Selles. When Dart arrives in his hometown, he's shocked to find that it's been destroyed and ransacked, the villagers either killed or run off. His friend Plos informs him that his childhood friend Shanna has been kidnapped and sent to Helena prison. It is here where the uh, journey of the Legend of Dragoon officially begins. Little does Dart know it, but by him going and trying to save his friend Shanna, he is thrusting himself into a prophecy that spans 11,000 years, and he is dabbling with forces that are far beyond him at this point. I don't want to give too terribly much away with the story of The Legend of Dragoon because if I told you the story outright, there'd be no purpose in playing it. That's why I'm trying to be as vague as possible. The story of The Legend of Dragoon takes place all over the land of Indusness. You will explore several different environments as you play this game, from swampy marshlands to volcanic caverns to lands of corrupted gravity. And I know a lot of you are like, what is that? I guarantee you've never seen this in any other game. The Valley of Corrupted Gravity is a very interesting locale. You will explore vast deserts, you will visit floating cities, you will visit ancient tombs. The world itself has amazing locales that will really give you a chance to explore the environment. Hunting for items, weapons, armor, and of course fighting some exceptional baddies. 
At the time The Legend of Dragoon was released, it was a very beautiful game. Sure, by today's standards, the graphics are pretty bad. But if I may compare it to another game that came out right around the same time it did, Final Fantasy VII has uh, polygons and high-res graphics a lot like The Legend of Dragoon does. But The Legend of Dragoon's graphic fidelity is slightly better. Characters are full-sized. The high-res... Uh, graphics cutscenes are more beautiful in my opinion and it just looks really good and I'm sure you could do a lot of things with modifying it on PCs much in the same way people have done for Final Fantasy 7 but the game looked really good the sprites were colorful the the textures were decent and uh, everything just looked really good it really popped for me personally Aside from graphics, there was the sound of The Legend of Dragoon. The audio tracks are not as memorable as, say, some of the stuff that you would hear in other RPGs like Final Fantasy VII or Chrono Trigger, but you will find themes that are initially catchy. The overt metal theme may put some people off at first. I myself enjoyed it, but give the music a chance, give the game a chance, because it does get better. There is some beautiful music in this game, including the main theme, If You Still Believe, which I have used in some of my other YouTube videos. And the game's overall theme and tone sticks with what it's trying to do and what it's trying to convey with the characters. Some of the music in the game can really push you over at emotional moments where you're supposed to feel joy, sorrow, or hatred, and it really accomplishes what it's supposed to do at the end of the day. One of the most endearing things for me about The Legend of Dragoon is the characters themselves. There are a number of intricate and intriguing characters in this series, not the least of which is, of course, the main cast. Dartfeld is one of the most deep characters I've had the chance to play as in an RPG. He himself could very well be the antagonistic, depressing, emotional, angsty type character that we see in other RPGs, but he isn't. He has every right to be once you find out what happened to him during his childhood, the events of the Black Monster, his family, and him living the life of a mercenary. However, his character is very uh, jubilant, very uh, forthcoming. He's a happy character, and even when he's down, even when he's on the brink of giving up, he doesn't because he has friends to back him up. And it's something I really liked about his character. If I can compare him to another series for a moment, in The Legend of Zelda, Link has always been the holder of the Triforce of Courage. And that's what Dart really does represent to me. He is courageous. His element is fire, and I've always felt that he burned with courage. However, he is not the only character who is unique and intriguing in this series. Rose is another character who is very deep and dark. She herself encompasses the role of the depressing, angsty, emotional character, and she has reason. Rose has a lot of baggage. Rose has ties to Darth that go deeper than he knows. She even has ties to the Dragon Campaign that took place 11,000 years ago. Her character has been on a long, dark, emotional journey. And when you play the game and learn the secrets of her, it'll really, it'll really add to your overall experience and flesh her out more as a character. In the beginning, you'll probably just think she's a bitch, which I did. But as you play, you'll see more and more of her, and she'll open up to you. She's a very intriguing character. But the entire cast is like that. From Levitz, one of the first teammates you meet, to Shanna, Dart's childhood friend, to Kongle, who is another very unique character in the series. He's one of the last of his species of Gigantos, these large, lumbering, powerful beings, which were, of course, a, in stark contrast to the Minitos, which are small, diminutive uh, creatures. Kongle serves Emperor Dole, and when you first meet him in the game, he is an enemy, and he beats the shit out of you. But the cool thing about Kongle is... When you overcome him, he decides he wants to follow you. He wants to serve the strongest. And through his companionship, you teach him there's more to life than just being the strongest. There's right and there's wrong. And he fleshes out even more as a character. I really love these characters in this game. 
from Meru, who could be misconstrued as the comic relief character you've seen in many RPGs. She is just as deep as anyone else. She has ties to the Dragon Campaign as well, and even ties to another ancient race. There's even a wider range of supporting cast characters, like Dabaz, the merchant who adds a, a sigh of relief in certain situations when you run into him. There's King Albert, who is the ruler of the Kingdom of Basil. There is uh, Lloyd, the mysterious swordsman. Hashel, the martial arts master. The Legend of Dragoon also has innovative gameplay to go with its beautiful cast of characters and intriguing story. Now, of course, the battle formation is the typical three characters, like in most RPGs. However, the combat mechanics are different than most RPGs. In The Legend of Dragoon, instead of just hitting the attack button, seeing your character fling himself across the screen and whack the enemy, you will be engaging in a button prompt which will allow you to do combos. I understand a lot of people right now are thinking QTE, quick time event. It's nothing like that, so don't worry. These button prompts allow you to perform your additions. Additions are the abilities to do combos during combat. With each successful strike, you will do another part of the combo until you complete it, doing extra damage and gaining extra experience for your character. These additions range from several different simple ones like Dart's Burning Rush attack, all the way up to an incredibly difficult Gust of Wind dance for Levitz. These allow you to do heavy damage and of course get more experience, but they also really open up the combat. It's not something that's boring or derivative, it's something that's very hands-on and makes each encounter very fun and very frenetic. As you play the game, you will of course eventually come across the ability to harness the power of the Dragon Knight, the Dragoon. These abilities will give you uh, greater combat proficiency. When you transform into a Dragoon, you will be given two options. You can attack the enemy, or you can cast magic at them. Of course, the attack does heavy damage. While magic allows you to fling fireballs, or darkness shards, or use healing light on your party. When it comes right down to it, the combat is a mixture of strategy, button mashing, and just good old RPG mathematics. It's a very rewarding combat system, mixing up the different characters' attacks, their elemental prowess, what armor and weapons they're using, and what magic attacks they're flinging. But it also comes into play when you're fighting bosses. For a little bit of a tip for those of you who do pick up this game, certain bosses get stronger when you become a Dragoon, so be warned. Plain and simple, The Legend of Dragoon is just one of the best games that I've ever played. I really don't know what else I can say about it at this point. If I have yet to convince you to check it out, I don't really know what else I could do. I could threaten you, but that wouldn't work. I could beg you, but that wouldn't work. If you're not interested in this game, then either one of two things. Either you don't like RPGs, or you're an asshole. This game is phenomenal, and I really want you guys to check it out. That's why I did this video. It's a pain to edit, but it's worth it just to get this information to you. I hope that those of you who've watched this video have enjoyed it, and I hope that you really do go check out this game. I'll repeat once again, you can get it off Amazon, you can buy it on PSN for less than $10, or you can emulate it for free and play it on your PC. Either way, please check out The Legend of Dragoon. And if you like it, let me know, because there's nothing better than hearing the words of people who are playing this game for the first time telling me what they think about it. It's my favorite game, period. It's one that I will endlessly defend. If I were fanboyistic about any game, it would be The Legend of Dragoon. And I really don't know what else to say about it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that it's been informative, and I hope that it's been entertaining. But at the end of the day, the only thing I really hope is that you go play this fucking game. And if you're not, I'm so very disappointed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for anything that you do. And go check out The Legend of Dragoon. Take care, everyone.
Too slow. Too slow. Hmm. 